Good morning. I want to thank you for being here and worshiping with us today. I want to thank those that are joining us online. Um, this morning, we're going to finish up the Three Circles series that we've been in for the last couple weeks. Um, and this, get, get this one, you, you, know, you know what's coming, but today is the gospel, okay? And we know how I feel about the gospel. I get really excited about the gospel. But here's the issue with getting excited this week about the gospel is next week we start Christmas. And you know how I feel about Christmas, so it's like a double whammy. It's like Christmas, gospel, Christmas, gospel. And so in preparation for this, and this is just how God works. See, I planned to do this, this series last year in 2020, and you know what happened with 2020. And then we got to 2021, and I was like, God, I really want to do this. When are we doing it? And he said, let's do it here. And I was like, well, what are we going to do for Christmas? And then I was like, oh, you know what? Let's do the gospel and Christmas together. And so we're like, this is all we're getting for like the next four weeks. And I'm just, oh, <laughs> get ready, Okay. I'm, I'm expecting things from this crowd to get excited about, all right? Um, so we're going to close it out today with three circles. It doesn't end this. Uh, this is just the introduction to three circles. We're going to do training at the beginning of January. I want you to come and join us. At this point, I've had one person sign up for training. So me and that one person, we're going to have a great time. But the rest of you got to get there with us. Because this is important. This is a part of who we are. And so here's what we've we've seen. This is a a very conversational, very relational way to share the gospel message. This is the mission of Christ that we are about. And we we need to not shy away from it, but we need to approach it. We need to do it every day. So the first week, here's what we talked about. We looked at God's design, right? He, his design was perfect. If we go back to the beginning of the, of, of the scriptures, of the Bible, into Genesis, and we see and, and we looked at how, how God created everything, and it was good. That, he, you, it's evident from the beginning. There was a design behind what he did. He didn't just think, oh, on a whim, I'm going to create. No, he did it, and it was good. The, the, the pinnacle of that creation? Mankind. Now, don't get a big head about that because it's him that did it. He created us for relationship with him. He wanted to have a relationship with, we we are relational beings. He wants us to have relationship with him. He wants us to have relationship with one another. And, And so that was his design for us to walk and talk with him just as Adam and Eve once did. But then what happened? Adam and Eve, they depart from God's design. They think, hey, we know better. You've told us this, but here's what we think. And so they walk out of the design that he had for them. And the Bible calls that sin, right? We know what sin is. Let's not act like we don't. Let's not act like we don't do it. We, we all sin. And so that's what this is. They walk out of his design and, and sin enters the world. The, the Bible calls it sin. It tells us that everybody has sinned. Everybody falls short of God's design. And you know what sin leads to? Brokenness. Sin leads to brokenness. And we all know brokenness. Every person in here has been broken. You may be in brokenness right now. It feels like a lot of different things. A broken relationship. It feels like addiction. It feels like depression. It feels like discouragement or fear and guilt and shame. And the thing is, is when we're in brokenness, we all want the same thing. We want to get out of it. Last week, we spent the whole sermon on brokenness. We gave hope at the end, and and, and I pray that it didn't just take you down, but it's hard when we get into talking about brokenness. And what we do with brokenness is we try to fix ourselves. And that's what those little lines are, our fixes for our brokenness. And what happens when we try to fix ourselves? It brings more and more brokenness. We can't do it. We strive to be better people. We hope that somehow, some way, that our good's going to outweigh our bad. We look for ways to alleviate our pain. And when we do that, like I said, it's more and more broken that we get. And it feels like a bad thing. No one likes that feeling. But the reality is God can use that brokenness to get our attention to wake us up to the the truth that that he has something we need, 
See, when we feel broken on the inside, we, we realize that everything's messed up in our lives. We realize we need to change. There needs to be change that occurs so that we're not sitting in that brokenness. And this is where we get some really good news, right? There it is, the gospel. Oh, <laughs> this is the greatest news we could ever hear. When, when, the, when the angels came, they came to proclaim good news of great joy. I just want you to know as a church, I love you. But when I preach, I don't sense joy. <laughs> Remember, I love you. But it's a joyless one sometimes. <laughs> That's what we're preaching on through December. So get ready. So this morning, here's what we get to look at, is the way that God designed to get us out of brokenness. He, he saw us there. He saw what we did, and he could have scrapped everything and said, forget it. He could have started over. He didn't. He said, here is the way out of brokenness. So we're going to look at our main passage today. It's, John, it's starting in John 3, 16, which is probably the most popular verse around the world. People know it. People quote it. People use just the, the call number at sports events. You ever seen one of those John 3, 16 signs? I'm thinking, do they even know what they're doing? Do they even get what that means, the hope that that verse brings to humanity? I'm getting ahead of myself, so let's go ahead and read our main passage. I got to skip through here because I don't need that. All right, John 3, 16, all right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he's not believed in the name of the only son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and the people love the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. I got to stop here for just a minute. Okay, we, we get this verse. We understand this passage. We, we get that God loves us so much that he, he offers his son to create this way back. But this part of it, this should just, this should it crush us. It should just make us fall apart. That, that there are people out there that love darkness so much that they can't see the light. And the fact that we know what gets them out of there this, this, uh, it, this is just a little, and it should be just for us, but let's keep going. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light. They did not come to the light, lest his work should be exposed. But, but whoever does what is true comes to the light so that it may be clearly seen that his words have been carried out in God. That's us. We're, we're that but there. We, we get to go past it. We're not, we're not lost in darkness. We're not lovers of darkness. Let me hear you say amen if you thank God for the truth of this passage. Amen. That better not be the only time I hear you say it. Amen. Thank you. This is, this is it. Where last week we saw the severity of what sin did when it entered the world. This morning we rejoice. We celebrate what God did when he sent his son to the world. This is reason to celebrate. This is reason to be joyful. When we read these verses, we should be reminded that God, the creator of all things, loves humanity. Not just us. Not just the ones in this room. that He loves all of humanity. He loves us so much that he gave us a way back into relationship with him. Even after we chose to step outside his design. We should be encouraged that we don't have to save ourselves. I can't do it. I can't save me. I can't save you. But praise God, he can. And he will do that for us. And, and really, he wants to do it for everyone. His desire is that no one would perish, but that all would come to him. We know this to be truth, and we should just be bursting at the seams to go and tell other people that God made a way out of our brokenness. God has made a way out of our brokenness. If we go back into Genesis... 
This, this is really exciting. This is where we've been most of this, this series is in Genesis. But do you recall the curse that God places on Adam and Eve and the serpent? Remember that? We looked at that last week. It was one that was brought on by their choice to walk outside of God's plan, and it led to brokenness. But let's go back to, to verse, um, verse 15 of chapter 3 real quick. I will, this is God. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. He's talking to the serpent here, right? And, and he promises at this point in this, this curse that's, that's falling on humanity, there's this, this, this glimmer of hope here. And, and he's promising that this man is going to bruise the enemy's head. That man that's going to bruise the enemy's head, that is Jesus. Well, I know we don't think that the gospel appears until Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We might say that it appears in Isaiah because we read those verses at, at, at Christmas time, right? We're in Genesis, and the gospel is already unfolding. Do you see God's design there? I mean, like I said, this is not an afterthought. God wasn't like, oh, they messed up and now I've got to come up with another plan. This was it from the beginning. Jesus was the answer. This gospel is clear back in Genesis. Jesus is going to defeat Satan and it's foretold at the beginning of time. That is amazing to me. It just, it just oh, how amazing is our God? Look at that. Look at what he says. The gospel it says that, that Satan, all he can do is bruise Jesus' heel. But Jesus, look what he's going to do. He's going to crush Satan's head. <laughs> the power of God is clear here. What is happening? This is a foretelling of what is to come, what is going to happen. And, and what they get, we know it is truth, but they're just getting a glimpse of what's to come. They may not even understand it. We go on down into Genesis and look at verse 21. The Lord God made for Adam and for his wife garments of skin and clothed them. Remember last week, they're trying to fix their nakedness. They're sewing fig leaves together and they're trying to make a fashion statement with leaves. It's not working. It's not hiding them like they need to be covered. So what does God do? Because of their disobedience, because of the fact that they can't fix their brokenness, blood had to be spilt to atone for their sin. It's the first time we see bloodshed, the first sacrifice of an animal to make coverings for Adam and Eve. It was the, the only way at that point to make right the wrong that had occurred. Like I said, God could have said, nope, we're done. I tried this and it's not going to work. We're just going to start over. I'm gonna, I'm not even gonna, I don't even want it anymore. But he doesn't. He doesn't. He, he says, here is the way. This is what it's going to take. And, and if you continue to read the Old Testament, you know what you see? Rules and regulations to bring people to cleanliness. And I don't know if you've ever looked at them closely, but praise God, I live under the new covenant. I don't know. I don't know. It, it, this is bad. God's like, here, cut this thing that way and move it that way. And I'm like, uh-uh. No, I don't touch dead, an dead animals at all. Why would I? It's unbelievable the things they had to do, the way that, that the covenant worked and, 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 and how that was to handle their sin and their uncleanness and, and bring them to righteousness. And, and then, then we get to this passage in John and everything has changed. It, it's no longer how it used to be. Out of his love for us, God sends his one and only son to shed his blood to cover our sin. Not just our sin, but every person's sin ever born or never to be born. Everybody's sin once and for all. It doesn't have to happen again. Jesus did it and it's finished. Oh my, nah. It just blows my mind. It really does. To think that this, this did it. He, look at this great reminder. I'm just going to stop talking and read scripture. Look at this great reminder in Hebrews. And by that, will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Once for all. It's done. It's finished. He did it. 
Every priest stands daily at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices which can never take sins away. Did you catch that? I can't take your sins away. Any, any, any pastor, any person in charge in, in, in a leadership role, they can't take your sins away. You can't take your sins away. Only Christ can. Keep going. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time until his enemies should be made a footstool for his feet. Again, he did it. And now he's just waiting there for anyone that's against him, those that are not going to come to him. That's where they're going to end up. For by a single offering, he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. That is us. That is us. If we've responded to this truth, that is us. Did you catch it? We cannot take away another person's sin. We cannot take away our own sin. Jesus in one loving act does it, does it perfectly, and we're being sanctified through his sacrifice. Praise God, I don't have to do it. I would fail and I would fail miserably at it. Isn't it wonderful to news, news to hear that he took care of it all? Not just that, but because he took care of it, we're now a new creation knowing that it's all finished. You're not excited about being a new creation, are you? How many of you, if someone came up in here and said, I'm going to offer everybody in here a new vehicle, how many of you would take it? Don't even care what it is, right? You would take that new vehicle because you don't like your old one. Doesn't matter if it's a new one to you, you'd still take a newer one. We get excited about Christmas. That's, you know, you unwrap the gifts. You're like, oh my gosh, look at this new thing. I have an old one, but I can chuck it now because I got a new one. We're all about the new stuff. The best new stuff we can be about, the new creation we are in Christ. So get there with me. We are a new creation, right? Knowing he's finished it all. This is the way God has to bring us out of brokenness. The brokenness we live in, the brokenness of our world, this brings us out of it. Jesus brings us out of it. And sometimes when we start thinking about this and I start saying, hey, let's share this with other people, we get a little nervous, right? We're like, I don't know if I'll say the right things. What if I leave something out? But the reality is, is look at this. Look at this. The gospel is simply Jesus died for our sins was buried, and God raised him from the dead. That's the gospel in a nutshell. Do you know that truth? Can you tell that truth? Then you can share the gospel. This is it. This is what it... I, over Christmas, I know we're supposed to focus on his birth, but don't, don't not look at the other end of it. I encourage you to read all about Easter during the Christmas time. See the connection Look at the death, the burial, the resurrection. Make sure you see just how important each part is. Understand the why it had to be this way and let all the truth that you read start to seed down deep in your soul to a point that, that you can't think of anything else. Then allow the gratitude that you have with, for God to doing this, allow that gratitude to just keep you walking down the path after Jesus. Praise God for sending his son let that be the cause of why we want to tell other people the gospel. Because of what he did for us, never shut up about it. We talk a lot about a lot of things. Let this be one of them. Let this be the most. Revisit. Go back and think about the gospel interactions you have had in your life. I don't know how many times you've heard the gospel preached or spoken, or you've read it, or you've watched a presentation, or you've seen it in many forms. I'm not sure if you responded the first time you heard it or the 14th time you heard it, but think back on the way that it impacted you, on the way that it brought truth to you, on the way that it helped you realize your need for a Savior, your need to be brought out of brokenness. Because if someone has come to that point if someone has come to see their need for help to get out of it, this is the lifeline they need to hear. This is the truth that needs to be spoken into their lives, and we have to be ready to share what it means for our lives and what it can mean for their lives. 
We should be ready to talk about it at the drop of a hat. This is, this is where I want us headed. See, I believe the more we understand the gospel for ourselves, the better we can convey it to those around us. If we have more than just a knowledge of what the gospel means and what it is and how it acts, the better we can tell other people, here's what it looks like, here's how it is, this is what it's portrayed, how it's portrayed in my life. Don't ever become numb to it. Don't ever tire of hearing it. But be reminded of the importance of the gospel, just like Paul reminds the Corinthian church. Look at this. Now, I would remind you, brothers. Now, I would remind you, bro- he's talking to believers at this point. He's not talking to a group that does, hasn't been church. These are people who believe. He says, remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received in which you stand and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. He says, you've believed this already. You stand in this belief, but you need to be reminded of it. Go back Look at the gospel. Look at the impact in your life. Make sure you are reminded of it often. He says, For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received. He's saying, I I brought it to you because it's important. But before that, he said, "I, I had it. I received it. And he couldn't keep it to himself, so he's sharing it. And he's not sharing it with with the world at this point. Right now, he's sharing it with the church. Church, we need to share the gospel with each other. Please hear that. That Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. That he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. This is the gospel. It is summed up so beautifully here. It's being shared with the church. I want this to be us. I want us to share the gospel with each other. He was reminding those who were already believers of the gospel just one more time. We need to tell it to each other. Well, but everybody, I don't care if you've heard it 382 times in the last three days. One more time, you need to hear it. And if it's not from your brothers and sisters, who's it going to be from? It is time for us to talk the gospel, to speak the gospel, to share the gospel. We need to share it in Sunday school class. We need to share it in our small groups. We need to share it with friends who are believers that don't even go to our church. <gasps> yes. Even those that haven't seen the light of the Baptist steeple. <laughs> oh, just kidding. Everybody, anybody that's believed the gospel should want to hear the gospel time and time again. Uh, well, it's not time for us to be tired of it. It's not time for us to go, I've heard it before. No, this is one way to prepare us to take it with us wherever we go. If we can't speak it here among family, we're not going to speak it out there in the world. If we can't share it here where people already embrace it and believe it, it's going to be hard when we leave these doors. We know this gospel. We have lived this gospel. We have, we have this in our lives, and we need to make sure that we are sharing it at every opportunity. And we've got to share all of it. We've got to let them know. It's not enough to just hear it. It's not even enough to just agree that it happened. Demons believe. Demons know that it occurred. But for us to truly share the full gospel, for someone to accept the full gospel, we've got to talk about this, repentance and believing in the gospel. This is where the action comes in. You've heard me use this word repent as we've gone through this series, as we've walked through these circles, but it is such an important part of receiving the gospel because this word repent, like we've looked at, it means to change. It means that transformation is coming. When we we step into salvation in Christ, we are no longer the same. Are you not happy about that? Because <laughs> again, this is where that joy should be bubbling up here, right? We're not the same we were before we came to Christ. We are transformed into a new creation, a new 
creation. The old is gone, the new has come. We have turned from our sins, and guess who's there when we turn? Jesus Christ. He is right there waiting on us to make this decision that, that we realize we can't do this alone, and he needs, we need him. He can't, we can't do it, but he can, and he will do it perfectly. He helps those. He helps us. He helps us come out of the brokenness. He creates in us something different than we were. Those things we once loved, those things that we tried to fix our brokenness with, they become less desirable to us. They they might even become detestable to us because as we turn away from it, He is there. He has brought us into something new. He's, He, oh, some people think God's just waiting there to condemn us, don't they? They think that if they come to him, oh, it's going to be a life of misery. I mean, have you seen Christians and how joyless they are? Mm Mm-hmm. They look at us and they think, man, I don't want that condemnation. The truth is, the life you live without Christ is one of condemnation because of Genesis 3. Those that haven't come to Christ, they're already in condemnation. They want to get out of it. They come to him and they become something new. The old life leads to to death, physical, spiritual, total death. The life we have in Christ once we repent and believe is one of love and forgiveness. And true life actually begins at that point. But but we can't pretend, we got to pretend that we're not excited about it. Right? Because what's a Christian? The people that live by the do's and don'ts of the Bible. That's all they know about us. We can't have fun. Right? See? It's okay. I mean, honestly, this is, we've got to get this. We've got to see the truth that God wants to save everyone. It's not his will that any should perish. That should be what we're praying to. For us, let's, let's, let's just talk about it for a moment. There are people out there that we're like, they can't, no. God can't save them. We come on, let's 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 really address this here. God wants everyone to come to salvation. We should too. I mean, we look at people, we got our gauges of what's bad sins, and you can't, you know, there's no return from that, right? Mm, There was a return for us. We we've got we've got to see this. We've got to understand what this life is in Christ. It's not his will that any should perish. When Jesus starts his earthly ministry, he proclaims this truth from the very start. Look at Mark chapter 1, verse 15. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. He is proclaiming this to the disciples. He's telling this to everyone that's following him. He's, He's speaking it to those that didn't even want to hear it. The time to repent and believe was now. For most of us, we think the time to do this is when I have the opportunity to, or I'll get around to it, or once I feel, that's the time we want to do it. The time is now. We are not promised any other breath than the one we have right now. There are people out there dying without Christ because we want to take our time to get comfortable with sharing the message. Stop it. And when I'm telling you to stop it, I'm telling me to stop it as well. I am not yelling at you. I am just excited and I'm yelling at myself too. This, this, is, this is what we've got, to, that we've got to get. This. Jesus was declaring this. For those who had already taken this step, we know that when we repent and believe, we step into relationship with Christ and it's a lifelong relationship that leads us to be more like him and less like that old self. It it causes us to to walk in a a deep commitment with him. It's not something that's that's a a very easy, simple decision. It's it's not something that leads us to have the warm, fuzzy feelings that we like. It's, It's not something that guides us to an easy life but it's a life that can only be lived when we we give up self and we totally rely on God. I mean, the, the, the reality here is we even need God to help us fully believe. We can't even believe on our own. We've got to have him to help us believe the truth of the gospel. And once this happens, once we repent, once we believe, look what happens. God helps us recover. 
God helps us pursue his design for our lives. I don't know about you, but I need that help. I've tried to do it by myself many times, and it does not work out. Just like we need his help to call us to salvation, just like we need his help to, 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 help, to, to believe and repent, we need God to help us recover and to pursue him in all things. As that new creation that we are, God removes that heart of stone, and he gives us a heart of flesh, and that heart is turned towards him. We want him. See, the gospel leads us back into relationship with God, back into his design. It's through Jesus' death and burial and resurrection. This is, this is nothing we accomplish on our own. It is only through him and in his power. When we take that step back into God's design for us, you know what happens? We receive his spirit. It is indwelling in us. We are spirit-filled. Did you know that? I know we don't. I, I know the spirit freaks us out. He's there. He is a gift from God. He is always near us. He is with us constantly. And when the spirit is indwelling, he empowers us to walk in the path of Christ, to follow, to become more like him and less like us. Look at how Paul conveys this again to the Corinthian church. Get this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. And I, every time I read this passage, the more and more I just love it. You know why? Because too often we think it says, therefore, if, if, if anyone is in Christ, he's going to be a new creation. We read it as one day when we get to heaven, we're going to be a new creation. It's not what he says. He says, we are in Christ. You are a new creation right now. We are new. We are not the same. We have changed. He has transformed us. He is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God. Nothing to do with us. This, this is from God. This is his gift. This is his way who through Christ, oh, I love this too. He reconciled us to himself. And look at the ministry he gave us. Reconciliation. God reconciles us to himself and says, now you have the ministry of reconciliation. Do you even know what that means? It don't look like it. That is, <laughs> I'll tell you, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself. He wasn't counting their trespasses against him and entrusting to us. Get this, here we are again. He is entrusting this message of reconciliation to us. God says, I'm reconciling the world through Christ. And guess what? Those of you that have come, you have that ministry now. It doesn't end there. Keep going. Therefore, this is, this is uh, man, Scripture is so good today. It's good every day, but these together, just wow. We are ambassadors for Christ. How, you all are ambassadors for Christ. Again, little joy there wouldn't hurt us. This is not a burden. This is a privilege. Okay, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through. God did not have to use us to do this. God is God and he could have done it any way he want, but he chose us to be his ambassadors. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin. So that in him, we might become the righteousness of God. We are his ambassadors. We have a ministry of reconciliation. And look what it took. It took Christ, who didn't even know sin, to become sin. He took every sin of this world on him. Think about that for a minute. He didn't even have a clue. He didn't know sin. I mean, he knew sin, but he didn't. And here he is with it all on him, just so we could be reconciled to our God. God restores us to the way that we are supposed to be through Christ. He reconciles us. He repairs what was broken. We are new creations. I know I keep saying it, 
but I want you to get it with me. I want you to see that you are a new creation. You, you got to get how great it is that we are new creations. Again, little joy doesn't hurt anybody. This is it. This is who we are in Christ now. A new creation. And God wants this for every person. He wants everyone to hear and know this truth and respond in obedience. And yet we know that not everyone will. But we also don't know who will and who won't. And that's not up to us. I mean, Scripture, scripture tells us that few will find that way. But the way to God, the way He's designed it to happen is for us to be his ambassadors to this broken world. We're commanded to do this. We're called to go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that he's commanded, and behold, he is with us always to the end of the age. Amen? That is beautiful. I mean, duh. Again, the gospel. Again, what we're supposed to do. Again, what we are called to. We should want every person in our county to know this truth. We should want every house to have heard it. We should want them to have repeated opportunities. A lot of times, I don't think we get that if everyone in here was talking about the gospel out there, people would hear it more and more. Yet too often we think, well, I'll just let someone else take that one, which is what the other people think, and then nobody says it. We should want this word, this truth to be out there. We should, we should want to be trained to know how to do it, to, to be able to, to, to approach anyone and everyone with, with just a, a simple conversation of who God is to us. God has given us a mission, and we should want to be faithful to carry it out. I want us to be a body. I want us to be a body that chooses to work in God's plan and bring those who are searching, those who are, are spiritually broken to know him personally. That's my desire. I am praying that he's planting the same desire deep within you that we are going to be a gospel-centered church, that what we do is tell people about the gospel. Yes, we can feed them pork burgers and hot dogs all day, every day if we want to. We'll get more people to serve, though. It's not just those that were there last night. And that'd be great to feed them. But I want what we feed them to go deeper than the physical needs. This is who I want us to become. And we're going to start doing it. We're going to start training you. We're going to start teaching you how to have these conversations. And guess what? I want you all to be part of it. And guess what? It's going to be uncomfortable and you may hate it. But guess what? It doesn't excuse the fact that we are commanded to do this. So training starting in January. Take out one of those brown connect cards and fill it out. Say, I want to be trained and put it in the offering plate. Let us get everything ready. And then in January, let's come together. And let's start to celebrate the gospel between us to prepare us to celebrate it with people out there. I mean, if, if we're just going to hear this and go, well, that was great, but what are we going to do about it? This is what we're doing about it. I can't make this happen. I did tell Sunday school teachers if they want to be part of this, that their class has to be unless someone wants to step up and teach. And well, we know how that goes, right? We're either going to get a bunch of new teachers or everybody's going to be in here. I'm good either way. I, I've been praying that God will just ignite this fire in us, this passion to just know the gospel and think about the gospel so much that we just want to take it to our world. So as we get ready to move into our time of response, are you ready? Are you willing to be equipped to do your part of the Great Commission? Are you ready to be trained? Are you ready to, to seek out some new ways to do this? My prayer, again, is God's working in your life right now to give you a passion for the lost. I, 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 my hope is when we read those verses, you heard the parts of those that are in darkness, and you went, oh my gosh, I know so many of them. And I want to see them know the hope of Christ. 
And so as we, we, we get ready to do that, ask God to lead you into this. Ask him to give you a willing heart and, and to take away any apprehension you have about talking with people in our church about the gospel. Because this should be the one place that we are most comfortable sharing things about our God. So the other part of this as we close is that, that card I gave you a few weeks ago. The, uh, let me grab one. The Network Evangelism Card. And if you didn't get one of these when we move to our time of prayer, raise your hand and I'll bring you one by. You should have at least two names on this already. But this morning I'm going to ask you to be praying for a third name to go on this card. And our time of response is going to be a little different today. Surprise. Here's what I'm asking. I'm asking you to pray for the, the third name. I'm asking you to pray for boldness to do it. But I'm asking you to pray it with those around you. I'm even asking you if you can, if at all possible, if you can get on your knees at your chair, if you can get on your knees up here, let's think about the posture in which we're praying. Let's get in a place of humility and say, God, we need you to guide us in this. Because if it's not him doing it, if it's us doing it in our own efforts, it's not going to go anywhere. He has the power to save. We do not. He has called us to be ambassadors. We are at his will, not our own. And so we're going to move into this time of prayer. We're going to move into this time of response. And I encourage you, don't just sit by yourself. Gather with the few around you. Get on your knees if you can. Let's take this seriously. I think God is calling us to much more than just meeting here on Sundays. These conversations, these relationships that we have are a perfect opportunity that maybe we've been missing for far too long. So if you haven't gotten one of these cards, after I pray, just slip your hand up. I'll be happy to bring you one. Start praying for those names of who you can contact, be in contact with. Be praying for God to give you a boldness and be praying for a heart of obedience as we walk after Him in using this, this opportunity of the three circles to share the gospel. Let's pray. Father God, once again, I... I thank you for the gospel message. I thank you for the hope that it brings to a broken world. I thank you for personally experiencing it in my life and making me a new creation. So God, as we humble ourselves today, I pray that you continue to guide us to those in our path that need to know you, that we have a, a connection with, and they may listen to us talk about your design or talk about the brokenness that we've seen or talk about the way that you have saved us. Give us a boldness, give us a longing, give us a passion for those who do not know you and help us to follow the guidance that you are giving us in each situation. So God, continue to open our eyes to see the world the way you see it to be about the business that you want us to be about, to embrace the new creation we are. And Father, continue to grow us to be more like your Son each and every day. And in all these things, we will give you the glory and the honor and praise. In your Son's name we pray.